What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Glenda Chavez and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I transformed my 1950s walk-in pantry. But first, let's go back to the very beginning. A bit closer, this is what my pantry looks like right now. On the top is where I keep all of my napkins. Somewhat organized is what I would call that. Somewhat organized is completely wrong. <laughs> this pantry was so disorganized and cluttered, it was begging to be cleaned out. As with any DIY makeover, the best way to begin or to start is to empty out your space and clean the area so you can have a blank canvas to start planning your vision if you don't already have one. This can help you see the potential that your space can have. I was emptying out the pantry, I was also making sure to check dates on everything and throwing out anything that was expired so that I didn't have to sort out through it later. Alright, so I definitely have a lot more stuff than I thought I did. You don't realize how many things you end up keeping in your pantry that you had no idea that you had. So that white bag there is all trash. Um, and then let me show you. This is what it looks like empty. Um, obviously, I still have to vacuum it and obviously clean it really, really good. But, oh, I wanted to show you guys. Look how cool, when I close the door, it automatically shuts the light off. When you open it, it turns on. The reason for that, the, so the owner who built the house um, put one of those little old school buttons that clicks when you close the door. I wanted to get the ceiling painted first and out of the way, which is why I began there after wiping the whole pantry down. I'm just using bare paint and ultra pure white in a satin finish. A cool tip to remember for in between coats is to place your roller or your brush in a Ziploc bag to help keep it from drying out. It saves time from having to wash it or wasting a roller. to remove the trim from here in order to be able to remove this board so hopefully now the board will slide right out and then I'll get this one out this next one out and then we can put the trim back so we'll see fingers crossed the reason for removing these boards was because I just felt like I needed a bigger space in between the shelves that were already there and so this helped me to achieve that I filled the holes in the wall with my all-purpose joint compound and also taped and floated the sheetrock that I had placed earlier. If you are new to my channel and you're not already subscribed, I would love and encourage you to hit that subscribe button and become part of my YouTube family. You can look forward to me uploading once a week with all the DIY content. To get a smooth finish, I sanded all of the filled in holes with a sheetrock sanding block. It was finally time to start on the shelves and I applied a very generous layer of stitcher strip and then scraped it off 30 minutes later. The great thing about stitcher strip is that it has a pleasant odor and is safe to use indoors with proper ventilation and PPE. After stripping, you want to use mineral spirits and steel wool to remove any existing residue. Guys, please, I cannot stress this enough to please be safe and use proper PPE. I know I am trying my best to remember to be better about this myself. So I am actually in the middle of sanding all of these boards or shelves down right now. This has become a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought this wasn't going to be a lot of work. Um, I'm kind of kicking myself in the a sorry. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for deciding to want these things. So 
what I'm doing now is I am sanding with an 80 grit paper and then after I'm done sanding with 80 grit then I'm going to go behind it with 120. I'm not going to show you all of the sanding because it's boring. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. If you haven't used this brush before for trim or corners, you're missing out, I'm telling you. It truly makes the job so much easier. If you use a nice, slow, and steady hand, taping won't even be necessary. I actually used to always tape everything, but now I'm finally starting to trust myself not to, and it saves so much time. I'll have it linked down in the description for you guys, as well as all and most products used in this project that I have links for. Because I did sand down to bare wood, I decided to use a pre-stain. my staining was done I decided to go ahead and paint all of my walls originally I had chosen a beige color but ended up deciding on ultra pure white by bare once again it felt like it would look more clean and crisp and the contrast would be better this is in a semi gloss finish so that way it's easy to wipe down These glass spice containers I bought off of Amazon and they were super inexpensive. It came with plenty of labels, a uh, marker, and even a funnel. Although I didn't really think that the funnel was ultimately necessary in order to transfer all the spices. you should always be patient and look through everything that your package comes with I didn't realize that they came already with the labels like this literally as soon as I did the last bottle I found these shirts so although the containers are new I do still recommend you washing them so here I am just drying them off before I start putting my stuff in them These larger labels I also got from Amazon and they were only about $6. Again, everything will be linked in the description for you guys. The items that I did not remove from the original packages, I just placed inside baskets by category so that way they looked a little bit more organized. So I wanted to show you guys my new fixture. So it's actually not a fixture. All I did was take a wired basket that I found at the dollar store and made a hole and just stuck it up there. So how cool is that? I ended up finishing these off with a little bit of polyurethane water base because we are inside and I didn't want to obviously put too many fumes inside the house. This is what I used. Used three coats of it, sanded before my last coat. So yeah, now it's time for the fun part and to start decorating. Mm -hmm. 
this ceramic dipple I thrifted for a dollar from a garage sale down the road. I thought that it was the perfect find. window eventually we're probably going to be end up replacing it just like we're slowly replacing all of the other windows in the house but I figured just to make this really look cohesive and new and fresh it was better if I just went ahead and painted it and so I did you've made it this far thank you so much for sticking around but let's remember now what this pantry used to look like and what it looks like now. I want to thank you guys so very much for watching. Your support means truly so much to me. As always, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Remember, be kind and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.